Morning all, let's have a look at a very interesting game from round two of the US Chess Championships in 2013. Caden Troff, a very up and coming youngster, rated 2421. He's the top under 16 player in America and number 14 in the under 16s in the world and number 68 player in the USA. He's playing white against the very experienced super grandmaster Gata Kamsky, 2741. So Caden kicks off with d4 and Gatta chooses the Dutch defence. A statement is being made that this is going to be a fighting aggressive game. c4, knight f6, knight c3, d6. So the pawn playing here means that maybe in the future e5 is the intention, not the standard Dutch stone wall. g3 and now we get an indication of the Leningrad Dutch fianchettoing this bishop and then usually later a plan for e5 and stuff like queen e8 or this kind of thing is on the cards. Bishop g2, bishop g7, knight h3 as though white might be intending d5 followed by knight f4 where the knight's neatly uh, eyeing the e6 square. Now this next move e6 is a very interesting move. So against d5 that can now be answered with e5 if needed. Queen a4 check a, disrupt, a disruptive move, trying to get a tempo perhaps to go here, put pressure on b7 if bishop d7. But uh, black plays c6, and now white plays d5. There's a slight downside, some dark squares are being weakened when white plays d5. And this can start to create the conditions for quite a good bishop on the dark squares. So watch out for this bishop on the dark squares later. So d5, quite an aggressive move. Black just castles, d takes e6, and now bishop takes e6, not too concerned about this knight g5 which is played, bishop drops all the way back to c8, now white castles, queen e7. So what is the end result here? Well it seems as though black has a slightly fragile pawn here on d6, can it be targeted frontally or with the bishop? or even like this later if the queen was out of the way. So this, this pawn, is it a lemming? Or does it signify something about black's position that there's dynamic potential? There is e-file pressure here for black. A knight can use either c5 or e5 potentially if it goes to d7. We see queen a3. Instead of the usual b3, queen a3, I'm the pawn like this. Knight bd7. And now rook d1, the frontal attack as well, joins force with the queen. So a seemingly passive retreat from the strong grandmaster Gatakamsky to defend his lemming pawn. Knight e8, defending d6. And now, okay, we have an interesting situation. Why not attack the pawn again directly with bishop f4? If bishop f4, maybe just h6, and then I think it's okay. I think knight e5 after is possible. Also troublesome though would be knight c5. If black reacted knight c5 here trying to protect the pawn like this then bishop takes d6 is nasty like this. So black has to be careful here. A move like h6 should be okay. Followed by knight e5 perhaps. Okay. So in this situation though, white is intending to strike potentially with c5. If you can encourage this pawn to go forward, there'll be other weaknesses perhaps to exploit. We see knight e5. And here, attacking the c4 pawn, white just plays c5 in this position. Okay, so what's going on here? What would happen if white plays d5, well then maybe the d4 square is neatly useful for white, e5 is slightly weakened, and maybe even a sacrifice later on d5 is on the cards. So black really wants to keep uh, flexible in this position. He plays actually d takes c5 here. It seems a very committal decision in some respects. 
but it does get rid of any liabilities on the d file. White now plays a combination. Queen takes c5 seems okay. For example, bishop f6, f4, knight f7, knight f3. White should be okay here. But white goes for a combination now with bishop takes c5, offering the g5 knight, which black takes. And now the idea is revealed f4. Queen drops back. Where else? Where else can the queen go? If queen g5, g4, okay, let's just engine check queen g4. Should have made a note about this, pardon me. f takes e5 should be okay for white here. If the rook moves, I think there's big trouble with rook d8. The queen's kind of misplaced there. So in this position, the uh, best it seems is what Gatta played, queen f6 in this position. It's actually one of the best moves in the position it seems, queen f6, which I know it seems a little bit silly to go with tempo and lose the exchange, but this is the whole idea, which is a brilliant concept that he seems to have foreseen this combination. Um, so he's offering up the exchange with queen f6. So why, why? f takes e5, queen takes e5, bishop takes f8, leaves white the exchange up for a pawn, bishop takes f8, but you can see black does seem to be quite strong on these dark squares, and in the Leningrad Dutch that's quite um, an important bishop, the Fianchetta bishop often, because white does sometimes get carried away with moves like d5 earlier, weakening dark squares. In particular this diagonal looks uh, really dangerous. We see queen b3 check. Now if bishop e6, then I think just queen takes b7. That's why king just moved here to g7. And now, like a deer in the headlights perhaps, you could argue here, white was doing okay in this position, but um, has to play accurately. Um, a move in this position like e4 might be quite good. For example, if f4, maybe just taking and trying to use the f file with rook f1. So say check, queen e5, queen f7, and now white can use the f file. And white shouldn't be that much worse. Here's the exchange up, after all. But in the game, uh, white didn't play e4 in this position. White played bishop f3. So perhaps he is concerned about things like the check and the knight potentially coming to use g4 perhaps he wants to defend e2 uh, but what happens here now knight d6 instead of knight f6 protects b7 which means the bishop can now move to e6 without losing b7 we see now knight a4 it looks a little bit awkward for white now knight b5 protecting b7 and again bishop e6 is now on the cards queen d3 and the bishop now goes to e6 and these bishops look very nice complementary bishops here protecting all of these squares between them so the power of the two bishops uh, is shown here um, there's no entry point easy entry point for white in this position even though he's the exchange up and this this knight's a bit of a pain as well now. Uh, potentially coming to d4 if white's not careful. If white retreats, then maybe bishop c5 and knight d4. So it starts to get a bit tricky. White plays king g2. And a slight problem is the bishop can't retreat now. So it's a bit stuck on f3. And this prompts a very aggressive move from Gatikamsky. g5, just threatening g4 now. The king makes a space for the bishop and we see bishop e7 which means the rook has got opportunities like this maybe to swing across if needed queen c2 and now g4 forcing move bishop g2 now really really aggressive stuff but look at these bishops controlling all the squares here with no entry points for the rooks especially this rook and this knight 
are really quite passive in this position. And black just plays h5 with a clear crude intention, difficult to stop, of h4, which offers either hg or h3. Really, really difficult position for white to play here. White tries to open up a file for the rook with e4, but it's little too late now, this e4. It's hardly as effective as before in this particular position, because now black plays h4 with huge threats of h3 and hg. And this queen, unfortunately, is a tempo gainer. After e takes e f e takes f five, bishop takes f five, attacking the queen. Queen c four. And now the crunching h three. This is really bad news in this position. This h three. So you might wonder why. If the bishop dropped back, what would happen? Well, bishop e4 is possible, but let's just very quickly just check here. Strongest might actually be bishop g5. So just maintaining the threat of bishop e4 to get the bishop e3. These bishops will work beautifully like this very shortly. So, for example, rook e1, bishop e3. White will be forced to do something desperate, potentially knight c3, knight d4, and now there's a threat of bishop e4 mating. So this this is absolutely terrible. So if white's forced to give up the exchange like this, we have this position, and we're talking minus six here. Apparently, this is not too hot. And then white starts to lose material, having to fend off mate. Okay, so it's all sorts of nasties if the bishop retreated to f1 here. So this is a desperate move played now, just rook e1, just offering up the bishop. h takes g2, king takes g2, queen f6, white is material down, and faced with horrible moves like rook h6, he hasn't really got that much counterplay, and he decided it was best to resign in this position. It's uh, a pretty nasty position to play on, uh, but just just from an engine point of view, just let's just play a few few more moves as an example. Say rook eighty one, rook f eight. So we've got potential threats on this f file. Potentially threatening. Okay, so king h one, knight c seven. This this is just okay. Even if black goes into an end game, it's just very unpleasant for white. So he did decide it, decide to sort of end it there. Um, it's not a clear uh, forced checkmate just yet or anything, but he's just material down really. He's having to you know having to give up that bishop. He didn't want to really play on from this position. Okay, so a very interesting exchange tactic there in the Leningrad Dutch. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.